It's day one of an all-new season of MasterChef. Buckle up, because we are kicking it in to a high gear. This is the season of legends. We're doing something we've never done before and opening the doors of the MasterChef kitchen to some of the biggest names in the culinary world. The undeniable queen, Paula Dean, the legendary Emerald Legacy, Curtis Stone, Moe Mono. Ready? Thank you, Chef. Every single week, Joe, Aron and I will be joined by the culinary creme de la creme. We want to cook this steak in its own fat. What is so important is the balance in this dish. Base, 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 out of the pan, OK? Keep up and listen. I want you to cook and show me that you are better than me. Flippin' doodah. You look like you're doing great. You're the best baker in the world. Yeah, yes! Our home cooks are about to get an education. Past the water. Salt like the ocean. That no culinary school could ever match. Wondrous! There are some great flavors here, but it's dry. The dish completely messed today. That doesn't scream legendary status. What a waste. Yeah. You see that? Thousands applied. This small town girl has big dreams. But only America's best aspiring cooks <laughs> earned a trip to LA. <laughs> now it's time to find out. Quick, quick, quick. Who's ready? Come on, do something. This is go time. I'm losing my mind right now, dude. I'm about to lose my career. There's a room full of ledgers in there. Oh, oh Medic, Medic. Please. Cut straight through my fingers. And to make their lives. Woo, there you go, baby. I love you. <laughs> a little more legendary. I can see like you want to win this competition. It was just a recipe for disaster. I don't want to go home. <laughs> She's here to help you, OK? Yes. And cook their way. That's a professional touch. It's definitely resting quality. It looks beautiful. When a plate is liquor clean, that is truly something special. To the championship. I'm just trying to work hard and make my dream come true, you know? You touch my heart. Winning MasterChef would allow me to pursue my dreams and get my family to a better place. I'm here to get this apron. I'm here to win. Because if you want to be a legend, you need to learn how to cook like one. This is MasterChef Legends. I can't wait to cook in the Master Chef's kitchen. This is the start of a new career for me. This is the start of a dream. You believe Daddy made it all the way to Master Chef, baby? Oh my God! Wow, this is it. in the master chef kitchen, the kitchen that everybody dreamed to be in. Check out all the legends up there. I came all the way from Connecticut, and I'm super excited to be here. Like, this has been a dream of mine for a long time. I used to watch it on TV and never thought I'd be here. Look at this. Look at this. I'm sorry. Look at this. Let's go. Welcome to the incredible MasterChef Kitchen. Congratulations. How cool is this? Awesome. Now, for you lucky home cooks tonight, this kitchen is where it all begins. Because unlike never before, every week we are bringing the culinary world's biggest names right here. This is MasterChef Legends. You are the best home cooks in the country. But only one of you will earn the title of America's next Master Chef. Wow. You'll also walk away with a quarter of a million dollars. 
and a complete stunning kitchen from Viking. Right. You'll also win the one and only Master Chef trophy. Ooh. Tonight, your task is to impress us with your signature dish and show us that you deserve one of these. A legendary MasterChef apron. But for the first time in MasterChef history, only 15 of you will earn an apron. Now, tonight, we aren't the only people you need to impress. You will also need to convince one of these legends that you are worthy of that incredible apron. Tonight's special guest is one of the biggest culinary legends of them all. He's mastered the art of Creole and Cajun cooking. He's won three James Beard Awards, starting things off with a bang. Yes! It's more like a bam! <laughs> it's taken us 11 years to get him here. All of you, please welcome the incredible Emerald Legacy. <laughs> Emerald Lagasse walks out, I am just in amazement and shock, and it's just uh, awesome. It's awesome. Oh, my pleasure. Good to see you, man. Oh, oh, man. Wow. Honestly, it's an absolute honor. Um, not only have you put, you know, Creole, Cajun food, comfort food on the map, you own 11 restaurants across the US, had a massively successful TV career, written 19 best-selling cookbooks, and you've inspired millions across the planet. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to see these people cook. I'd like to see passion, delicious food. It's time to bring it and have fun. Cook from the heart. Listen carefully. Tonight, you'll have to convince at least three of us to get your hands on that incredible apron. Now, here to offer up a little help and guidance is last season's winner, Dorian. And last season's finalists, Sarah and Nick. So good to see all three of you. Welcome back. Dorian, any words of advice for tonight's auditions? Whether you get an apron or not, this is only a hurdle. You've already beat out thousands of people, so that's something to definitely be proud of. Right, listen carefully. You'll each have 45 minutes to cook an incredible signature dish. I want to see that passion, that drive, that energy. Understood? Yes, sir. Good luck, guys. Winning MasterChef would absolutely be life-changing. Quarter of a million dollars. And the MasterChef trophy is just complete bragging rights. Guys, season 11, the season of legends. With only 15 aprons, this is the most competitive season in MasterChef history. The smallest mistake can send them home. Guys, your 45 minutes starts now. Yeehaw! Do this. Here's my bourbon. I can't even yeah. put words to how it feels to be back here and watching them go through what we went through a year ago. Like, you it's almost crazy. feel a little bit of the nerves from right. them. Right. This dish will get me that apron. It has a lot of bold flavor, things that you don't think that will go together really well. I'm making a bourbon glazed salmon with a rice pilaf. Everything goes better with bourbon, if you ask me. 11 years in the making. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you so much. And you much. finally return that call. <laughs> <laughs> it won't take me 11 more years. <laughs> promise. And we're happy that you're here for this beginning part of it, because this is really where they need to be inspired. Just think how nerve-wracking it is for, you know, those contestants coming through. And not only the three judges, but now the season of Legends, Emerald kicking off our first week here. This year with Legends, you need nerves of steel in the MasterChef kitchen. Agreed. Make sure you put your best slices on there, OK? Yes, Chef. Welcome, young man. What's the dish? So my dish is a seared ahi tuna on a bed of a cauliflower turmeric puree. I made a bourbon glazed salmon with a rice pilaf. Oh. <laughs> Shove a closer look, gents. Yeah. Yeah. And this is you on a plate, right? This is me on a plate. Just to remind you, MasterChef Legends, 15 aprons. We're setting the bar extremely high. 
Unfortunately, the dish completely messed today. Pilaf should be fluffy, fragrant, exciting, and that's even crunchy. I've got sort of rice kernels in my teeth, and the salmon's raw. I have good news and bad news. The good news is that that's the kind of dish that you would find in a restaurant. The bad news is that restaurant would most probably be in an airport. Joe, there is some good food at airports, by the way. Both Emma and I got restaurants at airports. <laughs> exactly. My point in case. <laughs> Feeling good? Yeah. Nice. This is the culmination of my whole story right here. Coming from, like, no food to having all this food around us, this is the American dream, you know? I was born in Havana, Cuba, in 1980. Back in those days, food in Cuba was very scarce. I tried an apple for the first time when I came to the States. And then the more I tried, the more I became obsessed about foods and flavors and textures and colors. So I know firsthand what it's not to have food. And here, Master Chef, I'm definitely trying to honor uh, my, my family. Uh, through all the struggles that we went through coming here, we came with uh, clothing in our back, nothing else. So yeah, being in America, being in Master Chef means the world to me, and I'm going to make it count. Let's go. Good evening, young man. Chef! Tell us about the dish. I'm doing some pan sear lamb chops. They're going to go with a parsnip puree. Is this a dish you've done before? Yes, sir. I'm having a little bit of trouble with the blender. It needs to go smooth, but it's, for some reason, it's not blending. Start it slowly. It stops it from splatting everywhere. There you go. Let's start it. There we go. Thank you so much. Good luck. Good luck. Keep it going, yes? Let's right. go. Wow. Good job. It smells amazing. There you go. God, where's my monster? Good job, baby. A spoon, I need a spoon. You got it, baby. Ah. Six, nine, eight, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. The pressure is on. It's the season of legends, so they are expecting the highest caliber ever. This dish will capture uh, my ambition and what I want to go after. I'm getting one of those 15 aprons, and that's a fact. Tell us your name, and what have you made there, my friend? My name is Alejandro Valdivia, originally from Havana, Cuba, and I made a pan sear lamb chops with a fresh herb crust, an heirloom tomato carpaccio, and a cream of parsnips. Why does this speak to you? Is it something that's a food memory? <sighs> you okay? Being a little boy in Cuba, there was not much to go around. Especially protein is like very scarce. So it's humbling just to cook for the four of you to fulfill my American dream, which is this right here. How did you get to America? In 1994, the American government drew a visa lottery for the first time in 60 years. Wow. And my mother was one of the winners of that visa. And we already won the lottery once. If I win tonight, it's going to be the second time. Amazing. Shall we? Excellent. It's very stripped down. So you really need for all these elements to really be executed well. I appreciate the fact that the plate looks very, very good. But we'll see how it's cooked. Let's dig in. Mm -hmm. All right. Perfect medium rare. That's great. Wow. So I think it's a little bit sad what you've done with the tomatoes. When you have tomatoes that good, you need to have the confidence to serve the seeds because it's where the juice is, where the flavor is. But you've nailed the lamb. I like what you did with the mustard so that the herbs had a little adherence. I agree with Gordon about the tomatoes. Sometimes we have a tendency of trying to do too much with something that's so simple. But overall, I like your dish. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. That lamb is unreal. It's really interesting to see how a cook really embraces an ingredient and excels at it. And I think that it's evident in the way you cooked it. Wow. Thank you so much. You know what the best taste in this dish really is? Your ambition. Thank you, sir. This year, you need three yeses to get your hands on that apron. Aron, apron or not? For me, it's an absolute yes. It's a definite yes. Thank you, chef. That's an honor. I don't know, like, with so few aprons, to give an apron for ambition, it's a big step for me. But I have to say, 
I think your ambition can go a long way. So it's a yes for me. Thank you. I've always said in this competition, it's not how you start, it's how you finish, but you've come in with a bang. You've got three yeses for an apron, and it's a big yes for me. Oh, my God. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Well done. Oh come on, come on. Let me put solid. this on. I promise you, I'm going right. to deliver. I won't let any of you down. Put the Good. ambition in the place. God bless you. Thank you. That was delicious. Yep, huh? Absolutely. Oh, my God. This is totally a dream come true. This is proof of the American dream. You know, a kid that came to this country with nothing and now has got a Master Chef apron. That's right like spot on. Can't wait to see where he's going to go. Amazing. Amazing, amazing. Hey, Kale, how you doing, girl? Great. You making me my cake? No, it's not your cake. This one's actually mine. Oh. I'm Jennifer. And this is my daughter, Kaylin, and we're from Castro Valley, California. I'm here cooking with my mom. We are both trying to get an apron. It's something we've always both dreamed of. My mom and I have been watching the show together every season, and now we're both on MasterChef. Cooking next to Kaylin right now is so special, and I'm just so excited to be able to spend this time with her together. My mom has always been my teacher, my role model. She's taught me a lot of things, both in the kitchen and in real life. I'm just so proud of, like, who she's becoming, and we're here competing together. So we're both going to get an apron. Kale, remember when I used, we used to go to soccer games? I do remember that. I'm still there. I'm rooting for you, girl. Yeah. You go, girl. You go. You can do it. Right. How are you doing? You're doing wonderful today. Weird. When you say weird, um... Hold on a oh my lord. Wow. You're wow. going up against your daughter? <laughs> yes, I know. What's you wrong with you? I know. Seriously? Crazy, right? What are you cooking? I'm making you today uh, grilled mahi mahi, black and forbidden coconut rice, and a nice tropical salsa. Right. So, this yeah. is the marinade here? That is the marinade, yes. What's in that? Some cilantro, onions, cumin, some cayenne, orange juice. We'll be good. Right, good luck. Thank you so much. Excellent. Let's go, young lady. Tell us the dish that you're doing. So, I'm doing a molten lava chocolate cake with a raspberry sauce. And you buttered the ramekin? I did. I buttered and sugared them, and I put them in the blast chiller. Be careful turning those out. I Make will. sure they're cooked, because they're not cooked. Boom. Oh. Yeah, you're done. And thank you so All much. Right, good luck. I definitely think that my mom and I doing this together is something that no one else in the world really even gets to ever experience. You got it, Mom. Five, four, three, two, one. Hands up. <laughs> I wish the best for my daughter, but I want an apron more than I can even say. Welcome. Thank you. And what dish have you cooked, please? A grilled mahi-mahi black coconut rice with tropical salsa. I made a chocolate volcano cake with a raspberry sauce with some fresh raspberries. Gentlemen, oh, right, your moment has arrived. <sighs> right. Now, let's see how that is. How long did you cook that for? Four minutes on one side and 45 seconds on the other side. I like what you did. I like how it looks. Ooh, that orange liqueur. Yes. I love that. When you marinate something, you still need to season it. The fish is slightly overcooked, but there's no seasoning. I think I can speak for all of us when I say that this is not the level we're looking for. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's not cooked all the way through. It missed its mark. This is the season of legends. There's only 15 aprons being given out this year. Um, so it's a tough one. Um, what do you think? The yes or no? Today. I'm still gonna keep cooking. Oh yeah. With my mom. Oh yeah. You guys are amazing. We've been really cautious with these aprons. Yeah. There's a high bar to set for them to get over in order to get their hands on the apron. This year the quality has to be super high and it has to be a game-changing dish. Pretty intimidating, right? Yeah. Now I'm like, okay, well, what's next?
speed up. Thank you, sweetie. I'm Matt. I'm from Cromwell, Connecticut, and I'm a construction worker. I work outside year-round. It's back-breaking work. I work outside in the snow, the rain, the heat, anything. So it's exciting to think that I could make a change and do something that I'm passionate about and something that I really do love. If I win MasterChef, a quarter million dollars would mean that my kids are pretty much set for college or I can start a restaurant. That's huge for me. What's going on? What are you cooking for us? I'm making you an egg yolk ravioli. You know something? You are on hallowed ground with the egg yolk ravioli. It's really a signature dish of the show. We've seen it over the years. We know what the standard is. I'm excited for this. Good luck. I'm definitely feeling nervous. I'm trying to go big on a dish I know they know is difficult. This is probably the most important dish I will make in my whole entire life. You got it. Three, two, one. Good job. I'm pretty happy with the way the dish came out. Honestly, the judge I want to impress the most today is Emeril. I mean, who wouldn't want to impress their idol? First name, and describe the dish, please. I'm Matt, and I made for you an egg yolk ravioli with homemade ricotta, a basil oil, some roasted cherry tomatoes, and some crispy fried leeks. Your eyes lit up when you saw Emeril. What does that mean to have this legend here? I, honestly, like, you were the first chef I started watching, and you made it so exciting for me, and and bam, and kick it up a notch. If I get an apron or not, just to meet you and shake your hand is, is a huge deal for me. Shall we? Let's go. Excellent. So when I cut into this, the yolk should obviously be runny. Very good. That's great. Did you make the ricotta? I did. 45 minutes. Gents, it's the season of legends. Toughest season yet. So it's a tough one. I'm excited about your technical flair. Smart move with the ricotta. Needs a bit more seasoning. And the fried leeks look great, but they don't taste anywhere near what they should do. I would prefer to see one third less on the plate and the two thirds done better. And so, for me, it's a no, unfortunately. Joe, what do you think? Good news and bad news. The good news is that the heart of your dish, the pasta, is perfection. The bad news is the pesto is super garlicky and the tomatoes, although done right, are really not necessary. Question is, is it good enough for an apron? For me, it's apron worthy, yes. Thank you, Joe. Maybe just a couple dots of that pesto, because it is very aggressive. But execution on the pasta, spot on. So, si, senor. It's a yes. Gracias. So, this year you need three yeses to get your hands on that apron. You've got two. Emerald, you are the deciding vote. Well, I'm trying to outweigh the positive and the negatives overall. Your pesto uh, tasted raw. Maybe that might have taken over a little bit of the dish, but you nailed the pasta. So I have to say, it's absolutely my honor to give you this apron. Amazing. I'm Thank you so much. impressed with what you did with 45 minutes. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And Congrats. honestly, it's an honor to meet you. Thank you. Here you go. Can you put it on, Daddy? Just got an apron. It's like the craziest Ooh. feeling in the world. And the ravioli, it's a very difficult dish to make. He got the pasta just right. It's just that lack of really cultural understanding of less is more, you know? But it's MasterChef legends, so I need to be blown away before they get my vote for an apron.
So guys, two aprons out, 13 to go. We've seen some pretty top-notch talent. How are you guys feeling? I'm so impressed to see the level of talent for home cooks coming right out the gate. I'm, I'm really amazing. I'm shaking so much. It's OK. Yeah. Good. Just relax. Good. Thanks, guys. Enjoy. I'm making a mess over here. My name is Autumn. I am 27 years old, and I'm a bartender from Boston, Massachusetts. I grew up a very typical Boston Italian family. We're always cooking, always pasta, always bread. Get out of there, you. <laughs> I'm really excited to be in the MasterChef kitchen and cooking. Woo! I'm really nervous about the judges. I might, like, I might lose my <laughs> if I see Gordon Ramsay. Oh, my lord, I swear. Autumn. Autumn, nice to see you. What are you cooking? What are you doing? Um, I'm doing a banana miso cake with a cream Ooh. cheese frosting and a miso caramel sauce with some brulee bananas on it. A banana miso cake. Yeah. Wow. Okay. In 45 minutes. Yeah. yeah. How do you get it cooked in 45 minutes? I put them on. I did little cakes. Okay, good. Yeah. Smart. Yeah. Can you become America's next master chef? That's the burning question here tonight. I think I can. I'm really Why? determined, and I like adding my own unique flair to everything. The yeah. accent's changed now. Why is it because you're in front of the no, man here? Uh, no, well, I don't know. You guys are making me nervous. This is no. crazy. Me? I can't even believe it's you. him. <laughs> He's the legend, not me. Both of you are. This that, is like wild. Good. I can't even Trust believe this. He's so much more TV. Oh my so goodness. what are you I, looking for in this? Uh, I'm just trying to get it a little bit lighter and get all the clumps out. So Increase maybe you need to whip it. Yeah. Whip it. I'm, yeah? I'm going to, just you guys are intimidating. Wow. Good okay. luck. Yeah. All right, keep it okay. going. Yes. Doing this cake in 45 minutes is a huge risk. I need to go in the fridge. If I don't have it cooled in enough time, then the frosting is just going to melt and go everywhere. I'm going to make sure everything's on point. I just don't want to make any mistakes. I'm very much a perfectionist. Finishing touches. Finishing touches. Good. Ten seconds left. Ten, nine, nine eight. eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. It's Going into this tasting, I need to get that white apron. There's not a lot of them, so I'm just hoping that doing something a little more different will pay off in the end. Cheese. Can you describe your dish for us? Yes, so this is a miso banana cake with cream cheese frosting and a miso caramel sauce and some brulee bananas. Let's do this, gentlemen. All right. Miso? Miso, yes. That's a very bold move to put miso in a dessert format. Yeah, you know, the miso is really salty and has like an umami. So I put a few tablespoons of it into the cake and then I put a bunch of it in the caramel. Joe? Um... It's like, it's a lot. It, it's, as you said, it's a lot. There's a lot of, lot going on there. It's a bit extreme, but an extreme in the way I like. Very good dessert. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, you know, I think by coming in with dessert and doing something a little avant-garde like this really speaks to who you are. And I love the flavors. Thank you so much. I'm glad you whipped the cream cheese frosting more. Yes, um, thank you. I like it. Thank you. For me, the here is the cake. What you've done there is absolutely delicious. But just be careful, the additions of the sugar. I could have done without glazing bananas. Okay. Third mouthful in, it's like, oh my god, there's so much sugar in here. The smartest move for me is the miso. Um, can you cook savory? Yes. You can cook Italian? Yes, I am Italian. Joe? Well. I think you know what my answer is. I think it's definitely a yes. And yes for me, for an apron. Emerald? I, I, for, for me, it's, it's definitely yes. For me, it's a yes as well. Oh, Four strong wow, yeses. Man. Four yeses. Um, oh, my goodness. Congratulations. Well done. Like a million bucks, I'm feeling on top of the world. I still can't believe that I got this massive chef apron. This is crazy. I love you guys. She has yeah. good instincts mm, with yeah. food. I've never had miso, but the banana cake. 
No, I've never had it either. Actually, really interesting. Very interesting. So, guys, that's three aprons out, 12 to go. The biggest thing that these home cooks are going into that they don't face in their kitchen at home, right, is cooking against the clock. For sure. You have to be able to tune all of this out because if you want to get to the next level, this is what it is. This is your kitchen for the next couple of months. Yes, yes, yes. Let's go. There you go. My name is Elise. I'm 39 years old, and I love to bake. It's everything to me. Being in the Master of Kitchen is a dream come true. I never thought in a million years I'd be here, but I'm here today. Woo! This cake represents me, and I'm excited to show it to them. When they taste it, they're gonna love it. Got it? Woo! All right. Oh. Oh. Welcome. <laughs> how are we? How are you? First name? Elise. Elise. Oh. How are you, Elise? I'm good. Good to see you too, man. <laughs> how, how are you guys? What are you making? I'm making a mini red velvet cake with mascarpone cream cheese. Whose recipe is this? This is my mom's recipe. She taught me when I was seven years old. I carried it through. I've been perfecting it. I perfected it so much that I got a ring. And I am hoping that it gets me up open today. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Watch that frosting. Make sure that cake's not hot when you're piping. Exactly. Taste, okay? taste, taste. And make sure it's cooked. Got Good it. luck. Thank Keep you. Going, yeah? I'm never washing my hand ever again. <laughs> I'm never going to wash my Welcome, young man. Tell us your name, where you're from, what you're cooking. Miles, I'm from Frisco, Texas. Uh, I'm cooking Miles style chicken fried rice. Miles oh. style chicken what? <laughs> right? This man's allowed to name dishes after himself. You're not. <laughs> so tell me about the rice. Are you you're using just regular, regular rice? Uh, actually, it's sushi rice, so this has more body. The dish sounds good. In that restaurant, it better be delicious. I'm gonna. Okay. That's the goal. That's yes. the goal. Oh boy. My hands have never shaked this much. Five, four, three, two, one. It's being tasted by some of the best palates on the planet, including my idol, Gordon Ramsay. Here we go. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I hope the mile style flies high. Hey, man, what's going on? What's happening? I've got a really beautiful, elegant, flavorful chicken fried rice. Chicken fried rice. Now, that's yes. like a global standard, right? Everyone knows what chicken fried rice is. Right, right. Are you insane or are you brilliant? It's a dish that I truly love, but in my opinion, it lacks a lot of flavor. So what I wanted to do is elevate that. OK, so if it's not chicken fried rice that we all know, what's the name of your dish? I like to call it Miles Style Chicken Fried Rice. Miles Style. Wow. Should we jump in, taste it? Yeah. How did you elevate the dish? I use salt, pepper, soy sauce, fish sauce, olive oil, and just a splash of water. This is not fried rice. I don't know where to go with it. I'm really stuck. Here's the honest truth, Miles. It's weirdly good. There's something quite warm about it. It's sort of elevated comfort food. I like what's going on here. The flavors are really nice. I don't know about the avocado, but the flavor's there. I don't know. Look, this is MasterChef Legends. We have Emerald here as a guest. So for me, it's a no. But let's see. Um, so for me, it's a yes. Resound. Yes? Really? Yeah. I'm really torn. I'm, I'm like really, really torn. I like the flavors in it, so I, I, I'd have to say overall it would be yes for me. Wow. I agree. Let me taste it just one more time. Do you think this is what gets you an apron? I do. I think you're right. I believe in you. You deserve an apron. Congratulations, bud. Oh Three God. yeses. You got an apron. It doesn't matter what I think, Miles. Thank you. You've got an apron. Just Thank be careful you. how you name a dish after yourself yes. next time around. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. I cannot believe I just won a MasterChef apron. It is surreal. You're giving out aprons for fried rice. Come on. Give me a break. It's not fried rice, though. It's a different dish. He just named it incorrectly. It wasn't that bad. I mean, the kid, he's onto something. I love this. Let's go, Mom. This cake is so important to me because I'm tired of being a home cook. You got this. Five, four, three, two, one. 
two, one. My family encouraged me to release my fears and step out and see that I deserve to have an apron around my neck. And I want to make my family proud. Well, welcome. Thank you. Today, I made a mini red velvet cake with mascarpone cream cheese, and I garnished it with freeze-dried raspberries. I can't wait to dive in that thing. Should we go taste it? Sure. Gentlemen. It's restaurant quality, let me tell you. I'm, I'm a bit peeved with the upside-down raspberry. <laughs> Do you mind if I turn that raspberry the right way up? You absolutely oh, can't. Fuck <laughs> me, man. Honestly, it's like, my guess. please, there you go. I'm dying to get in there. Sorry. Now that the raspberry's the right way up. Look at that. Elise, I don't know if I want another bite or hug you. Oh. Really, really well done. Really delicious. Oh, thank you. I got to say, Elise, it is just money. Thank you. Aron, for you, is it a yes or a no? It's unequivocally a yes. Emerald? I say yes. Thank you. Gordon? This dish reminds me of a MasterChef finale dessert. It's 100% a yes. Thank you. Well, then the proverbial icing on the cake for me, it's a fourth yes. Let's see how good this looks on you. Nice nice job, congratulations. Lady. Thank you. Now, can you get that wow. smile on that face, please? Yes. <laughs> Amazing. I'm wearing the apron. I cannot believe it. It's a dream come true. Yes. <laughs> you right, baby? <laughs>given out five aprons, guys. That's a third of our aprons. There's a lot of really good cooks out there, but, you know, let's really be selective. Where did I put my shrimps? What's here? My name is Sue. I'm 30 years old, and I'm from Houston, Texas. Just like home, right? Just like home. With a lot more cheering people. Mm. I am born and raised in Burma. What about the noodles? How's the noodles? Noodles are gold. I started cooking more like helping my mom and my grandmother, peeling onions, peeling potatoes, peeling garlic. So it was more of a chore than a choice. But then at 22, I got myself admitted into a grad school in the United States. So I started cooking a lot again just to comfort myself from homesickness. And that is when I realized food is engraved in the very core of me. I know you got it, honey. I'll, I'll get it. You're gonna love it. So what's going on in there? So I'm pounding fresh curry paste. I grew up in Burma, so we make a lot of curries in Burma. What yes. does America need to know about Burmese food? We have a lot of culinary influence from India and China, Southeast Asia, and I'm putting everything in the bowl that I'm presenting to you tonight. Good luck. I can yeah. promise you that. Thank you very much. Awesome. That looks amazing. It's the home stretch. You got it. I hope I make my family, my parents, my grandmother really, really proud of me. Three, two, one. Yes! I believe Burmese food is worthy of winning MasterChef title, and I'm here to win it. Hello, chefs. Whoa. My name is Sue. I'm presenting this Burmese shrimp and coconut curry noodle soup to you. And where does this love of food come from? I come from a third world country. We have to eat so that we can survive. So we are already grateful to have a bowl of rice every day where I came from. Wow. Shall we taste? Indeed. I can tell by your presentation that you were really considerate about all the different elements. It just says a lot about your finesse and your technique. So you toasted the heads throughout yes. as well? Yes, yeah. yes, chef. I, I charred them, and I squeeze out the juice, but all these heads, they go back into a shrimp stock pot. Admiral, how was that for you? Um, so I have a thing yes, that chef. I say yes, not to too many people, which is food of love. And this here, Sue, yes, chef. is food of love. Well done. Thank you, thank you very much, chef. I'm very humbled. That is truly something special. It means a lot to me, Chef.
It was um, a profound immersion into Burmese cuisine. Thank you very much, Joe. So I'm going to be really honest with you. Um, it's the best dish I've tasted all night. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Come over, please, young lady. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And Thank go you. away so we can finish eating the rest of the yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Please. Yes! <laughs> I'm so proud of you, honey. You're a master chef. Mom, Dad, I got the white apron. I just earned it, Dad. I just earned it, Mom. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you, Dad. Thank you. All the shrimp. You left half a shrimp for Emerald and I. I didn't taste the shrimp at all. Dude, I, mean, I, I had one I, piece of shrimp. shrimp. Well, there's two that shrimp tails. No, hey, well, can you get ready? What's wrong with you? <laughs> My mama. The audition rounds continue. Two no's, and you're out of this door with no apron. With another culinary legend for the very first time, Curtis Stone. Four judges. Your execution was perfect. It's beautiful. You definitely have an apron. One chance. That is one of the worst dishes that I've ever tasted. For me, I'm sorry, it's enough. To earn one of the few remaining white aprons and a prize position. I think you've nailed it. In the final 15. But the level that they're cooking at already, you guys are in for one hell yeah. of a season. One potato, two potato.